Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the new album from The Black Dog, Fragments. Ah, The Black Dog, it's been a while since I've covered these guys. I've done two previous reviews of them. Uh, in 2015 I reviewed their Neither Neither album, one of the first reviews I ever posted to this channel. And in 2018, I reviewed their Post-Truth and Black Daisy Wheel albums uh, in the same video. Uh, still pretty much stand by everything I said in both videos, even if the former is pretty hard to watch because it's so old and I didn't know how to deliver things. If you want the In Brief segment, it's in both of those videos. I'm, I'm not doing it here for the sake of actual brevity. But for those unfamiliar with these guys, this is the trio of Ken Downey, Martin Dust, and Richard Dust. There's been other eras of this band's career, like how they started out with the former member and the two guys from Plaid, and made stuff roughly as esoteric as Plaid do now, and it was great, but we're decades removed from that era. It's not really relevant to the discussion at this point. Nowadays, they're much more of like a straightforward, minimal techno and ambient outfit, and a heavily underrated one at that. They put out so many great projects in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Radio Scarecrow, Further Vexations, Music for Real Airports, Neither Neither, as I mentioned, all properly great. Uh, Tranquilments was also pretty solid, and, you know, Liber Dogma was nice too. Uh, they could always bring, uh, top-notch production and dark foreboding atmosphere with lots of tracks that would, like, build directly into each other for some stellar continuous mixes. I will always be looking forward to hearing what they have to offer and be willing to make time for a new project of theirs. I will admit their last pair of projects, Post Truth and Black Daisy Will, were a minor disappointment. The former was a fairly nondescript techno album that was recognizable as their usual style, but didn't stand out as anything special for them. And the latter was a somewhat more interesting, ambient-centric outing that ultimately didn't really stick with me either. They were fine, but I haven't felt the urge to listen to either since posting my video on them. And since then, they put out a series of hour-long ambient projects called The Conspiracy Tapes, where they uh, sampled people trying to justify having ridiculous beliefs like Flat Earth and anti-vaccine and that kind of stuff. It's an attempt to highlight how insane and harmful this stuff can get over their usual ambient excursions. I did not have the time or the stomach to sit through that stuff. Uh, might have been hitting a little too close to home as someone living in America, in the Trump era, who uses Twitter. <laughs> but the bits and pieces I briefly sampled through sounded perfectly fine. It might end up working better with some more distance from this era. So, I don't know. Those exist for anyone interested, I guess. But anyway, we got another new project from them, no concept this time, just a collection of their usual straightforward ambient techno, bolts and all. It is a little different from their other projects in that, uh, first of all, it was their first one being made after starting up their own Patreon page. So this is the result of, like, them offering snippets to their patrons, getting feedback from them, and eventually crafting them into this album here. And then COVID hit and they were forced to start working remotely, so in that way they obviously couldn't really get a focused project together like they could in, like, the Radio Scarecrow days or something. They just kind of went on, not really knowing where any of these ideas were going, and eventually crafted them into this album here. But the final result is still pretty solid, all things considered, and up to their usual standards. I want to say this is roughly on par with their Tranquilments album in 2013, probably a little better than that one, I think. It's unsurprisingly a little scattershot, can be a little hit and miss, but there were definitely enough solid moments that worked for me, and their usually well-executed brand of dark ambience that pulled it all together still end up with me generally invested in enjoying myself even in its least interesting moments. It's nothing mind-blowing or a major standout in their larger back catalog. This certainly ain't music for real airports, but it's definitely some really nice stuff. I had fun with it in all the same ways that I have fun with most post-2005 Black Dog projects, and was even a pretty nice grower with repeat listens. So, uh, may as well just go through the individual tracks. Uh, just going in order. Hex Collapse. This is a fairly muted opener. Uh, just some metallic ambient pads and plunking synth progressions with some nice melodies and thumping groove formed. Wouldn't have been totally out of place on Outiker's new Sign album, and even would have been one of the best cuts had it been on there. This one was okay when I first heard it and got markedly better with each return listen. I'm not sure if it's a huge standout in the bigger scheme of the album or would have stuck out to me as much if it wasn't the opener, but yeah, still good. Similarly, Porn Shop I thought was kind of underwhelming and long-winded at first, but it definitely clicked with me later. 
Uh, it is the longest track at just under 8 minutes, and there's some low-key moody atmosphere created with its minimal techno, snapping percussion, and muted clanging bell melodies. Weirdly gives me the same kind of vibes that, like, Good Vaporwave does, kind of evoking some, like, empty shopping mall or something like that, well, but with the usual gray and cloudy vibe that the Black Dog usually deliver, and of course without any sampling or that kind of thing. The second half of this track did trail off a bit and not grab me as much, but still pretty nice stuff, pretty creative too. And then you got Crash Core, that one was alright. Uh, kind of a straightforward set of synth arpeggios that plunk away and have some melodic progression. Wouldn't really say that one interested me much. Although then we get Black Smoke, which was probably my single favorite cut here, in the moment at which this project really started to pick up for me. The thumping beats, progressions of wailing synth pads, creating some real menacing atmosphere, and even some with some pretty decently catchy melodies, that one was really freaking good. Slung has all these smoky and thick synth pads wavering over each other, really like the atmosphere that one creates. And that transitions into another one of my big favorites, EMP 1951. Really loved all the plunking, acid-ish bass lines of this one and the way they go up against the cold and moody pads on top. And it slowly progresses to have a very subtle but actually pretty banging techno beat underneath it, so that's another great one. No Juju was another nice melodic cut with all these descending melodies and moody bass building underneath that I definitely liked, had a pretty cool uh, progression to it, but didn't stick out a ton. Also wasn't a huge fan of how that one just like ended really abruptly and kind of out of nowhere, but yeah, whatever. Then after Gia Head, which is a pretty cool uh, set of shifting higher pitch melodic pads, not much more than that, uh, we get a couple of atmospheric cuts that stuck with me notably more. Like the minimal moody pads going over rain sound effects on Soyo Solitude definitely got that mood nailed and some got some real emotion carried across. And Cup Noodles, another one of the best melody-centric tracks on here, a nice subtle and understated warming up after the cold and brooding sadness of the previous track. All these plunking melodies as stripped back as they are do put me in a better mood and are even a little catchy. It's very nice. Constructivist is mostly a set of glitching, high-pitched, glassy pads that kind of remind me of the beginning of Outiker's YJYUX, with some thumping kicks and clicking percussion that fades in the mix about halfway through. That one was pretty cool. And then finally we close with Amberly House, another more beat-focused track with these thumping kicks that, while pretty subtle, still have a lot of weight to them, and a bunch of dark, smoky pads fade in later for a bit more development and then ended up getting this track to stick more for me, really creating some intense and compellingly edgy atmosphere by the end, making for a pretty solid finish to this album. Now I have been skipping over the bolts while talking about this album, I hear they're just all marked with the letter B in brackets. And while I don't skip any of them while listening to this project, uh, most of them aren't super notable or really give me anything to say. They're mostly like just airy ambient excursions that act as cool transitional elements as you'd probably expect at this point. Though I will say there was one bolt that actually stuck out to me as a favorite. The last one, uh, she said it would happen. It mixes all these uh, super airy pads with some low mixed echoing female vocals and plinking like Jean-Michel Jarre-esque textures in the background. There's nothing else on the project that really sounds like it and the textures it explored really stuck out as unique and interesting. So yeah, I really like that one even if it was just an interlude. But yeah, that's about all I got on Fragments. Is this project going to stick with me long term as like a year endless contender or something? Probably not. Much like Tranquilments in 2013, this came out in a year where there's been a ton of great electronic music and the competition has been stiffer than usual. I mean, the same day that this project dropped, we got a freaking surprise double album from Monolake that's likely going to end up hitting a lot of the same notes for me as this. And I have a feeling is going to be commanding more of my attention. The cards were kind of stacked against this one for it to really stick out as something special in the bigger scheme of 2020. But I'm still a big enough fan of the Black Dog in general to not want to fully let this one slip through the cracks. It may not be the greatest stuff I've ever heard either this year or just in the wider scheme of their back catalog. But it is an all around really solid album that I enjoyed pretty much front to back. If you are a fan of their recent style of minimal ambient techno, it's as good as you would expect and hope for out of them. It's definitely worth giving a shot if you're curious. This this was some good stuff. It was some good stuff. I'm overall feeling a 7.5 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list or make me review something linked to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time. And Cup Noodle is another one of the best mel- And Cup Noodle is one of the-
I'm good at sentences.